I know I have people in the waiting room, Kevin. I'll get them in a minute. Well, good afternoon and happy Wednesday, everybody. We're so glad to have you. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started because I have three o'clock, so why not? So you are here for our inclusive services Q and A. Um, so what we're going to do, we have very little, just a few things to show you guys. And then we wanted just to open it up to your questions if you have any or any cool thing that you just want to share with the group. Um, so I want to give you just a moment to um, access the um, slides there. There's the bit.ly for it. And we will also put that in the chat here in just a second. Um, so that would be fine if you just take time to write that down or take a picture of it. And we will stick it in the chat here in just a moment. I think Kevin's joining us and we'll, um, he's amazing at getting all my stuff put in the chat, I think. Oh, he's already got it there. All right. Uh, I love, Amy has done most of our little fun things on our opening slide. And I hope you do recognize how important you are, um, guys. What you've been doing is amazing. All right, you got the bit.ly. Everybody's good. It's in the chat if you missed it. I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Um, this is our generic disclaimer. Um, everything changes daily, as you guys well know, and uh, we always know that something could change even as we're having a meeting. So again, any advice we give is just what we're hearing and things we're hearing from agencies. So please always check with your district or charter leadership for any specific guidance for you guys. Um, there is no PD credit. Today is just more technical assistance. We're just out here to show you a few things and connect with you and be here if you need us. All right, here's our live Q&A chat for, chat for distance learning. Some of y'all probably didn't think we would be at this point this many weeks later, um, but here we are. Here's our inclusive services team. I do want to point out um, right here in the middle is our listserv. Uh, if you're not already on our listserv, feel free to join it. Um, you have access to the slides and that's where it's clickable. Um, and then the at home learning website also has a lot of great things for our kids with disabilities. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Amy, would you like to go ahead and, and take on some of these? Yeah, um, we, there really were not any questions posted this week in our Google form. So we just kind of um, decided to give out some information that TEA is constantly updating every week. Um, this particular one is from the TEA support page um, for SPED and it is um, the challenging behaviors at home. You probably, um, not only do you teach kiddos who um, have a learning disability, but they may also have some behaviors that are associated with it. So this is the TEA guidance. Um, inside of that is a lot of um, good strategies and some help for parents as they navigate that home learning environment. So that is there for you. Um, we also found a couple of other resources. So we're gonna let, um, for autism, um, there are some visual supports for autism um, for those kiddos who are in our classrooms who are exhibiting some of those autism behaviors. Parents may not have quite caught on to the visual supports. Um, they probably have their own um, strategies at home. And now that kids are with them all the time, they are still struggling. So we want to um, make sure that we give those parents that support. So that is there for you. Um, and also a lot of these are things that you are able to use after we leave COVID-19. <laughs> so that was another goal that we wanted to do for you guys today too. So the next slide um, will be for supports for instructional and behavior supports. This document was created by Northwest ISD. Um, it is a phenomenal document in that it gives you the topic, the behavior or the instructional topic with a video tutorial and a resource link as well. Um, and these are things that you can give to parents. These are things that you can use, um, that you can use with teachers, that if you are um, not sure how to use a point system, it gives you a tutorial and then it gives you resources to set it, to set it up. 
Um, if you're using social stories, it gives you a tutorial video and then it gives you links to COVID-19 social stories and other social stories. So all of those are great resources to use now and when we leave this um, COVID-19 situation that we are in. Um, another resource, um, we wanted to direct you again to our parent resource page for the Special Pops Home Learning. Um, they are still conducting parent resource live events for parents. They are there for parents to be able to go to and use. Um, and they are um, using the, we also have our SPED text there too. So um, there's lots of variety of topics that they're doing live events that our um, consultants are doing for parents' behavior, um, instruction, um, getting a routine down. Um, some parents still don't have a routine. I know um, we're just now at my house getting into the routine of um, what we need to be doing on a normal day because it is very different from what we used to do. Um, another resource that we found um, is an accommodation and monitoring form. This one, um, I, put, I put this in here because it was on the TEA COVID-19 page, but it was in a different spot than in the SPED page. It was in the um, instructional continuity plan that is on the main COVID-19 plan. Um, what was great about this was this was not just something for now. This is something that we can definitely implement for the future as well. If you already have a way that you are monitoring those accommodations, stick with it. But this plan um, was something very simple that I really liked the clean look of it. Um, it gave the accommodation, which is what we normally do. It gave the routine in the, in the, um, for the student. And um, it was very clean on how often is it used and how helpful is it. That's some great feedback that you can get from your regular ed teachers on a six weeks basis, nine weeks basis, whatever your grading period is. Great feedback from parents. Um, it's just a really easy feedback form. So I don't have to get all muddled in with the um, parents giving me a lot of information. I just need to know, is it helpful and do we use it? Um, on our next page, um, we had some new accommodation resources. Um, this comes out of region one, right? Am I right on region one? Yes, region I want to sure we're citing them correctly. Um, region one, um, and one of our liaisons shared it with us, and I am just, I was exploring this for the last 10 minutes, um, and it is fantastic gives you the accommodation by disability. Is it print disability, oral presentation, visual supports, visual tracking, what do we need? And then it gives you what um, technical, assistive technical support we can give to accomplish that accommodation. Um, and in more than one form, it gives you Android, iPhone, um, and more than one way too. So very easy, clean, and concise, not something that you need to go and implement tomorrow, but it is definitely something that after this is all over to take some consideration and looking at how well did our kids do with those assistive technology supports and what do we have? What do we don't have and how can we make it work for our kids? Because we do know that those are working for kiddos. Um, I cannot remember what's next, Lorna. Okay, so we are just going to open up the mic for questions. So I'm going to let Lorna take it over. Well, we're here for questions. You can type them in the chat. You can ask us live. You can tell us something that's worked, not worked. Something, I don't know, if you just need some extra love, we'll give you that today too. Any questions from you guys, you can unmute yourselves. There's an unmute button, or if you're on a computer, usually you can just touch the space bar and unmute yourself. So let us know what you're thinking. Kevin put all those links in the chat as well if you want to copy. Kevin, I do y'all like kids. What do we need to know about how you're doing? What would you like to see us talk about? Tell us how you're doing. I know some of you that are on. So if you have something, we're here.
Okay. Looks like we don't have anything. And that to me is a good sign, not a bad sign. I think that awkward silence is fabulous because it means that you guys have plans, things are going forward, um, and you're doing a great job. Hang in there. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next one. Hold on one second. We've shown you these pages every time, so I'm not actually going to click on them, but it's our special pops at home learning should you need that. I'm going to pull up the chat. Oh, great resources. Well, you're welcome. Um, anything else, you guys? I'm looking in the chat. Kevin's monitoring it for us as well. Uh, someone needs the bit.ly. All right, I think it's on the next one, maybe. Oh, I'm lying. I went to the page. There. I just put it in the chat. Kevin put it in the chat for you. Thank you. He's always good about that. And if you guys have something that's working for you that you want to share, like this is how we reach someone. Um, if y'all have a way that you've reached kids that you were struggling to get to attend, we'd love to hear what you've done as well. Just another reminder, these are our s'mores, AT and Lid. I also know that on our meeting uh, is Katie King, who's our AT and Lid person. So guys, if you're life skills, you've got her on as well. You are welcome to ask her a question too. There's the bit.ly there as well. Okay. Language barriers. Okay. So I'm getting a couple things. I'm going to look a couple things on there. Language barriers are, are a huge challenge. Anybody want to talk about what they've done for that? Because it is a challenge. Um, Spanish tends to be easier because we tend to find people and can work on that. But anybody want to share what you've been doing um, to help reach some of your parents who might not speak English? You're welcome to unmute. Or my team, if y'all want to share any advice as well. Hang on and then I'll get to the next question. Um, Betsy, will you tell us what you just shared? She has a, it looks like a Google form, a file. Our district, um, I'm with Mesquite, sent out um, Talking Point, which is like a, it's an app, I believe. Um, my SPED teachers, I'm an R chair, so my SPED teacher has been using it and it will, um, you can type up what message you want to send out, send it out to, you know, a, a blanket group or just to one person and um, it will uh, translate it like if you're translating Spanish or you know whatever African dialect and then it will translate it send it to the parent and then when the parent texts back it translates it back into your language. Excellent thank you for sharing that. Um, I have that on a slide I'm gonna pop it in and then if you'll okay. just renew and it'll pop up for you but there are a couple of other not just talking points but a couple of other ones and the talking points is one that my literacy cohort has been using and have found great success. So let me pop it in the slides and then you can, I've also got a couple of other ones in there. Awesome. I will go ahead and um, after you pop that in, do the very same, I'll, I'll redo mine. Um, we did have one more question in the chat. We still about, have about 15 to 20% of our students that have not logged in at all, or maybe once or twice and never logged in again. So Christina, the main thing that you're gonna do, you know, we can't go and make them log on. You're just gonna document your attempts to contact them outside of the logging on. Like, okay, so they didn't log on. Did I call home and say, hey, here's what we talked about. Here's an alternate assignment. If nobody answers, that's okay. At least you tried, you sent an email, you made a phone call. So I would say simply do that. But then I know what's gonna come up. Everyone's like, yeah, how am I supposed to grade that? Um, I saw one thing recently where someone said, if kids aren't connecting with us, they're really just not giving grades. Although my neighbor happens to be with um, a local ISD and said she has to give two um, per week, I think she said. And so she was saying, maybe for a child, if I talk to their parents, um, I'm counting that as 100. She's like, I, I'm doing whatever I can if I'm required to give a grade. Um, but I would say the main thing is, it's okay because we don't know what families are going through, but just document all the efforts that you made to not just get the child on the 
logging in the Google Classroom or whatever you're using, but also the attempts we use to send things home or give the parents over the phone an idea or through an email if we're using a translation app. So um, hopefully that helps. Anybody else want to share what they have done? I put those resources in, it's right below the question. So you'll have to refresh and then go up a couple of slides, Lorna. Got it. Oh, it's already in there. Um, Took us right back to the beginning. Yeah, it's being a stinker. Yeah, um, yeah Alicia said about the African dialects. That is um, a very common problem that um, some of my folks have been running into. Um, that there's not a lot of good translation to help them with those dialects because they're so um, obscure. Um, but these are the three that we have found um, here, the talking points, Google Translate and Microsoft Translator. Talking points and Microsoft Translator are the ones that are the most reliable in translation um, continuity. Does that make sense? Google Translate is good for a pinch for short phrases and short words, but not really accurate when you're translating big documents. So just be, be mindful of that. And you can put to, um, Talking Points and Microsoft Translator um, on your iOS devices, and it will also be able to um, translate for you when you need to text or when you need to um, call home um, for short phrases. Um, but those are the two that the three that we have been um, I've encountered more times than not. Thank you, Amy. Uh, anything else you guys want to chat about talk about I appreciate y'all giving us your ideas. Um, I think we've all got to help each other. And I know Christina said it's still stressful. I hear you and you are exactly right. Um, I don't know how to make that go away. Um, except to say, when we all get back, uh, we're going to get more guidance from TEA about compensatory. Um, and right now, kind of ESY things are up in the air because we don't know with school council for the year what that means for ESY or any of that. So we're kind of waiting on TEA to give us a little bit more information um, because I know we all think, oh, well, if I didn't meet with a child that it's um, – automatically compensatory. Well, it might be and it might not be. So we're going to get some more guidance on that as we get closer to next year and, and need to start that. So, you know, if we're doing what we can for families and documenting it, I know your hearts hurt um, for your kids, but we're going to catch them up the best we can next fall. Next fall seems daunting right now, doesn't it? Yeah, I hate to bring up, like there was an article I was reading um, about the COVID-19 slide and I don't mm -hmm. To, like think about it right now because I just am trying to get kids through the stressful um, situations and we'll we'll deal with the slide next year because there's going to be one and that's just something we're going to have to and so as teachers we are always vigilant in trying to prevent that slide and it is something that's kind of inevitable and what we're going to do to help our kids we'll get to that when we get to that so but it just isn't going to happen right now <laughs> unfortunately and guys, working on anything, I'm sorry, I'm late to the party, so, but this is Sandy. Um, anything, too, guys, that you can work on for self-determination, self, -determination, self -determination, yeah. see, all of that, guys, is going to transfer. This is that time where I've heard parents say, you know, um, I really have never told my kid how I make a grocery list or why I start with the paper goods that, in my mind, I'm going through the grocery store, in my mind, making a grocery list. Those are the things we do internally without sharing. Guys, that is all preparation for life after high school, regardless of what your student's disability is. That's all planning for life after. So sharing that with families, that if they're doing those kinds of things, you can do math in the grocery store. Um, but I think parents are fearful that if they're not sitting at a table with papers and books and pencils and staplers, that they may or may not be providing um, a good educational um, lesson. So just reminding them, guys, any data you give me is going to be perfect because I would have none without you. And that's a good, that's a good um, point that you're bringing up too. Um, you know, I, I know, my husband is struggling. He's a high school social studies sped teacher and he's struggling to get some of his kids and, and part of it's a language barrier and part of it's a, I, you know, self-determination. And so if we can communicate with parents and give them assignments other than they may be intimidated by 
the electronic form or the at home, you know, like it's better just to kind of ignore it because I'm just trying to put food on the table than it is for me to do that and this, and I'm not good at either. So thinking about ways to um, give, a, you know, just a, hey, did you go to the grocery store? Did you make the list? Did you put away the groceries? Did you empty the laundry? Did you do the dishes today? You know, five things that they can do every day that will get them to a better, and you can take grades on that. I mean, I would, that's something I would do. And or I would borrow people's children to yeah. do chores. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and as yeah. a special educator and as a special ed student, every single student is going to go through transition. Yeah. So and the sooner we can get some of these skills instilled in our students, once we return, every bit of opportunity to do anything independently is going to be better for them in the long run when we start looking at life after high school and that planning once they turn 14. So you knew I was going to throw the transition wrench in there. You knew I was going to go there. Um, so season the moment. But y'all, just share parents. Exactly. Anything you can do, we love that what you're doing. Oh, perfect. Donna. Yay, Donna. Mm -hmm. Parents, things like the grocery list and remind all the practical applications of what they're learning. Exactly. Like, it doesn't have to be a formal lesson. Like, you can just say, this week, this is the five things I want you to do. And show, snap a picture and send it to my email. And that's it. There's your grades. That's all we're doing. Because... It may be intimidating for that parent to sit down and try to do a reading lesson with that child when they don't even speak the language of the reading lesson, um, don't know how to help their child, and don't know phonics and don't know how to help their child read. And, and are, they have entrusted that to us, and now we're not there. So that's just another, if you're worried about getting them engaged, try that for those 15 to 20 that are still not engaged and see if you can get five or 7% of those back into the fold and hopefully just getting something from them from life skills, so. I'll tell you, my neighbor was telling me she was struggling to get, she's a general ed teacher, but some of her SPED kids um, are not logging in. And when she called them, um, she asked them, she said, well, what have you done? And one of them said, well, I went on a walk. And she said, tell me three living things you saw on the walk. And that was her grade, literally. She was like, man, if I can just get kids to think science through anything. So um, anything yes. like that that you can do for kids, if you have to get grades, if that's something that you're required to do, because I, I get that that's huge when you're not really seeing kids like we're used to doing to be able to write something down. But that's just an example of how my neighbor did it um, to be able to take a science grade. So I, I love that idea. That's great. I mean, a lot of times I think as teachers, we, we have to have these big formal lessons because we used to do that in school and we had them for 45 or 30 minutes and we have these lessons designed out. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. Absolutely. Like I would, um, um, Eleanor is writing a how to cook cookies book right now. That's her writing task for this week. And it's because we did it two weeks ago. We made some cookies. Um, and so that is something very simple. And if she was not a writer, I would have her tell it to me. And then that's the grade for writing this week. Come on, because the idea yep. is there. Yep. Um, someone, so Donna says she's having uh, kids text them pictures of them uh, doing things, drawing anything that she can use, and then just commenting and praising them. Man, I can't think of anything better than that, Donna, just to let families know it's okay, I'm here. The kids are just showing you anything that they're doing. Great job, good idea. Give me what you got. I'll take it and we'll use it. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Anybody? Y'all are welcome to unmute. You don't have to type. Yeah, you can, you can shout out. I'll give you a minute. All right. Anything else team that y'all want to share or anybody else want to write in the chat or I'm going to go forward and put the slides up again because that's usually what people ask me for. They're right there at the bottom, accessing slides. Anything else in the chat, Kevin? I closed no, it. No, nothing else in the chat. Nothing new. All right. Well, uh, I don't know if we went through our helpful links, so make sure that we do that. Uh, this is where uh, Sandy's transition talk is there. All of our webinars are on a YouTube channel from the past. All of the slides we've used in the past are all there and all of uh, everything we thought you might need, we've put in one spot for you.
Um, there is a form you can fill out if you think of a question this week. Uh, we're going to try and get on. It, it may not last till four every week now, and that's okay. We're just going to try and be here. Uh, if anything new comes out, obviously we'll show it. But other than that, we're just going to be here to answer your questions. But if you do have some, think of something ahead of time, we're happy to take it ahead of time. Or you can just log on and tell us what's going on as well. Um, and we went through these, our webinar series, remote learning. There's our slides again. I'm probably going to leave it right there. That's who we are, our emails if you need us. Anything else, you guys? I don't want to rush you out. But I don't no. want to keep you. I've found the more that Oop, you cannot, the, uh, the teacher, the kids are showing the parents things that they know or teaching the parents, you know, things they've learned at school that the parents had no clue that they were doing because they weren't allowing them to do it at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's so true. That is true. We have a lot of parents who think their kids are kind of helpless. They really are not. And we're teaching the parents some new, some new stuff about their own kids that they didn't know. That's true, especially when it comes to the wash, like shaking clothes out before you put them in the dryer. They dry yes. a lot faster. I mean, that things parents just really didn't think about. Yes. And the kids are taking, my bunch is taking over more and more chores at home, they said. The one lady, she's been having to work from home, and she said, I turned around to do something, and she said, the kids already done it. Oh, she that's great. It, she said, we're getting to spend more family time together or. When it's time for supper, they start pulling things out or setting the table or doing what they can without even being asked. She said, it's just amazing what my kid can do that I never let them do before. I love it. What do you teach, Donna? The life skills class in, at Ferris High School. Awesome. Oh, Perfect, Donna. Go, Donna. I'm the one that you like my blockbuster cup. I'm not <laughs> in your classroom. <laughs> oh, thank you for telling me who you are. Now I know. Now I know. <laughs> You're hey, Donna, about, are you the one with the killer classroom with the kitchen on one side? I have, my classroom takes up a whole half of a yep. uh, hall in the back. I've been in your room. Hey, yes. that's a good classroom. You can live <laughs> in my classroom. Full kitchen, full bedroom, living room. Oh, that's perfect. Area, bathroom with a shower. You can literally live in my classroom. Yep. <laughs> Well, I know where to go if I ever need a place to stay. <laughs> they they used to use my room in the old building when the, they still filmed uh, on Friday nights for football on VHS tape. And mm -hmm. the coaches, instead of having to drive home late at night, would go in my classroom, call dibs on the bed. They, had, they could eat and they could watch the game films. So, wow. I mean, <laughs> that's been years. Of course, I've been teaching for over 40 years in that district, too. But, it, you know, you there are a lot of amenities. You can make a lot of friends, and you can get a lot of help for your kids that way. I think that's true for all of us. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to check the chat one more time. Kevin, what do we got? We just had a question and Sandy asked, uh, answered it, if we were going to continue to host uh, the Q&As weekly, and yes, we will. We will, and if there's something district specific that y'all need to ask, uh, feel free to shoot it to us ahead of time and we'll see if we can find answers for you. Um, if it's specific to your situation, we'll do our best. Thank you guys for all you do for kids and families. I know you feel helpless and frustrated, but I know that they feel supported and loved by this communication from you guys. So thank you for how you make families feel great. And Alicia, that Zoom link that you received to get onto this particular Q&A is the same for all of the weeks. So next week it will be the same link. You can just copy and paste that. Oh, thank you for saying that. All right. Anything else, anybody? All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Thank you guys for attending. I'm stopping the recording, but not stopping the meeting. So